So when I came back from my hiatus from making YouTube videos, the one thing that I realized needed to be upgraded was my computer. You know, my laptop wasn't cutting it. It was a quad-core i5 laptop without hyper-threading with only 12 gigs of RAM and I was trying to do 4K video editing on it and trying to do a bunch of stuff that it just couldn't handle. So I decided to go ahead, take a plunge, spend some money and get this system right here, my new video editing rig. By the way, I still haven't named him or her yet. So if you have any suggestions, please tell me in the comments below and while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about this new rig because I know people on the internet just love learning about other people's setups, about their part selection, about their build choice and just to admire PC hardware. So that's what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to be talking about every single part of it and also going to be talking about why exactly I chose this. So the reason I put this build together the way it did was because I was looking to build a system that was very focused on being good at video editing, photo editing and CPU heavy creative centric workloads rather than just an all out gaming system. Uh, while building this rig I also had to keep in mind a budget because I was paying with my own savings as well as a small loan for my dad. So this was a tight budget that I had to fit everything into so to build the system it required some careful steps be taken. I also wanted the system to be reasonably quiet. I can talk and the mic won't pick up too much of it and it still sound fine even with the PC running which is what I achieved with this rig. I also wanted it to look pretty decent and maybe have some possible future expansion options with this rig. So that was the stuff that I was looking at when I was building this rig. So without further ado, let's start this build. Let's start this breakdown. So the first thing I want to talk about is the CPU. This is undoubtedly one of the more interesting and more important parts of a computer. After all, it runs all the mathematical calculations that get stuff done. And for someone who's trying to do a lot of video editing and photo editing and maybe even music production, the CPU is probably the most important. Uh, the one I got here is the Ryzen 7 3700X and simply put, it was a very easy choice. It's an 8 core 16 thread beast of a CPU and it gets work done really, really quickly. It's clocked in at 3.7 gigahertz and it turbos to 4.3 gigahertz and if you want benchmarks, I can provide you with any because I don't have proper uh, workstation and a proper benchmarking system going on. So you can check out Linus Tech Tips video on the Ryzen 3rd gen series of CPUs, which I'm gonna link on the screen somewhere here, I think. While I cannot give you any benchmark numbers, I can tell you one thing for sure, it's fast and it gets the job done. Now, the reason I didn't go for Intel is simply put, Ryzen 3rd gen destroys Intel for value for money and multi-core performance for the money. While single core performance, it's kind of neck and neck. Third gen Ryzen has caught up so much with Intel that I'm not worried about it anymore because single core performance is contrary to what some people might think, super important to things like Premiere Pro and After Effects, especially in things like render times. And also I plan to game a little bit on this system. So that's why I wanted to have good single core performance. So when Ryzen 3 came out with that, brand spanking new improved architecture with better performance single core wise i thought it was like this is a no-brainer i went and got it. so for the cooling of the cpu i just went ahead and used this stock cooler that comes with the ryzen 7 3700x it works it keeps the cpu cool it gets things running and it's good enough i don't plan to overclock it i might put maybe a 300 megahertz bump on the cpu but there's really not much point, I think, in overclocking Ryzen CPUs. Uh, usually trying to run RAM at a faster speed is actually more of an efficient way to get more performance out of your rig rather than up overclocking the CPU. So the stock cooler should be enough. And besides, it's RGB, which is a nice bonus. Why not? So for the motherboard, which is the part that holds all the connects all the parts of the computer together i went ahead and bought an x370 tai chi motherboard and yes that is a gen 1 ryzen motherboard with a older generation chipset so x370 
is the high-end chipset from two generations ago when we're talking about Ryzen. But the reason I got it is simply put, well, the reason I chose it is really simple. So it's cheaper than buying a brand new B-series motherboard off the gen Ryzen, and it provides a lot more features that I care about than B-series motherboards from third gen Ryzen. So I don't need PCIe 4, which is perfectly fine. You know, I don't need PCIe Gen 4. I don't have anything that needs that fast of a speed, at least not yet. So going with X370 was a good choice because I could get a motherboard with better VRMs than a B-series board. It has a lot of USB uh, ports, which not all B-series boards have, and I might have to pay a premium if I bought a B-series board that had that feature. It has built-in Wi-Fi, built-in Bluetooth, that makes everything really fast, easy to set up. So by going last gen, buying second hand, I can fit a better motherboard with a lot more things I care about uh, into my budget rather than going with a brand new third gen B-series board that had a bunch of stuff I didn't care about and was lacking in features. However, there is one drawback to this and that is with Ryzen, the early gen motherboards and early gen chipsets have a lot of RAM compatibility issues and that is something that I faced here with my 32 gig kit of Corsair 3000 megahertz RAM. It crashes in games if I run it at 3000 megahertz, but if I run it at 2667 megahertz, it's perfectly stable. So I lose out on some performance that I paid for with the faster RAM, which is a good investment by the way in Ryzen because fast RAM is really important for getting the max performance out of your Ryzen CPU. Uh, hence 3000 megahertz, but the overall balance of performance and features that I got going with the second hand setup that's a bit janky and maybe not running at 100% that it could is overall beneficial than if I bought everything brand new. So that's why I bought second hand RAM and second hand motherboard. Uh, the reason I chose a two stick kit by the way for this Corsair Dominator Platinum RAM is because I want to expand this system in the future. If I have the budget and I have the need, I can put 32 more gigs in there, no problem, and have a 64 gig kit, 64 gig system just up and running like so. I don't have to replace all four sticks, which would, in my, which is in my opinion kind of dumb as well. The reason I chose Corsair Dominator Platinum, by the way, is that they have really good compatibility and be, they look gorgeous with their stunning metal heat spreaders. So that was really not much of a difficult choice. Okay, let's talk about the GPU, which is to some the most exciting part of a computer. And once again, I took the road of going secondhand and buying like an older GPU from last generation to get more value for money, to get more performance because tech depreciates so quickly, secondhand goods actually make a lot of sense, especially if you're okay with taking a small risk on whether it might break or not. I got a GTX 1070 Ti Zotac Mini. And the reason it's a Zotac Mini card, it's not because I was trying to go for a particular clean look or something. It was just cheap. It was just good enough to get the job done. So it's in there. 1070 Ti should provide me uh, the performance of close to an RTX 2060, which in my opinion is more than enough. It's faster than a 1660 Ti and it gets the job done in the games I'm trying to play, especially since I only play 1440p. It gets a gr it does a great job in doing GPU acceleration in video rendering, such as uh, Premiere Pro and After Effects. So I really can't ask for more. And if I were to spend more on a GPU, say get an RTX 2060, the balance of performance in this rig will really be knocked off. And I would have to skim and save on a lot of other parts if I went for a higher end GPU. So that's why I chose this particular one. And that's why I chose to get it second hand. Now let's talk about storage here. And this is, I guess, kind of a semi unique solution. Uh, I've decided not to do any sort of archive or long-term storage of files on this computer and I plan to only archive you know my video footage and my video stuff all on external hard drives or in the future when I have more funds hopefully a external NAS. Uh, right now I use this as a main archival drive for backups and long-term storage which is kind of dumb not very safe but it is what it is uh, when you are working on a budget so I decided this system is just going to have a big SSD for a scratch disk and for the main apps and also maybe one small hard drive in there for temporary storage of files. So I went out there and shelled out a bunch of money for an ADATA XBG S11 Pro 
one terabyte SSD. Now the reviews on this are great. They say it performs really, really well, even up to uh, when it's really full. And yes, it isn't, you know, an MLC SSD or even an SLC SSD, God forbid. It's a TLC SSD with an SLC cache, meaning it is not as fast as the fastest SSDs, but overall the parts that it has, the performance it has the from the reviews I read, it provides great performance and it has not let me down. It works a treat in video editing, as a scratch disk, in launching games and apps really, really quickly and I don't regret buying it at all. One terabyte is uh, an expensive purchase, no doubt because it's in one terabyte SSD, but I had to go and get one terabyte because when I'm working with video footage and working with video files, you know, the storage sizes of the video files get really big, especially now that I'm shooting more on 4K than ever before, thanks to my A7 III. So I had to go and get that expensive SSD. So into my, in my opinion, for my use case, that was a worthy investment and I bought it brand new because I don't want the risk of it having catastrophic failure and destroying all my data. So that's why I got the SSD. So for the power supply here, you might have noticed something unique. The power supply cables are braided and you might be like, wait, aren't you on a tight, difficult budget? Yes, I just lucked out with this power supply. I went and bought a secondhand power supply, which is all not a bad idea, assuming that power supply is a really reputable and high quality one, like the Superflower Latex 751 80 plus gold power supply that I got. Um, and this power supply just happened to have braided cables that fit the color combination of the whole rig, which I was just a lucky little bonus and a lucky little coincidence. And I uh, ended up getting it because it was so nice. and it works out to something really nice. So the final thing that I haven't talked about here is the case. This is the Agon ZXD H510i. It's a white case with tempered glass on the side. It is very nice. It's big, spacious, has plenty of you know cable management uh, facilities. It's really easy to build in, really easy to make a nice rig in and has plenty of space. It's super easy and Z ZXD makes really good cases. They have everything laid out really really nicely and I uh, in my opinion it, it, I couldn't I couldn't go wrong with it it's clean and while the ventilation isn't stunning because of the flat front I think it looks really really awesome and it just gets the job done perfectly so that's all I need from it so that's all I get so I guess that's it for this video um, the next part of this might be a setup tour I have a little you know packing vlog and packing video coming up as well might combine that with the setup tour uh, and so if you want to see my setup tour which is pretty nice now I think got a renovated room and everything and plenty of space now uh, don't forget to subscribe like and follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well if you enjoyed it it's a great way to say thank you and it helps out the channel a lot so I would appreciate it if you do it it's all linked down below uh, so yeah thanks for watching goodbye